Check that body. Hello, welcome back to ADSR Pro with me, Mike Smith. Uh, we're going to look at parallel compression. Um, I know I've done a tutorial on this previously, but Ian Clayton in the Cubase Pro group just recently placed a article on parallel compression. So I thought I would just show you a couple of techniques within Cubase using nothing but Cubase plugins. Let's get started. First of all, I'm going to open up our mixer and our VST connections, and I'm going to create a new group. So add group. We're going to create a stereo one. I'll just call it para add track and that basically creates a new group I'm going to move it across to the right hand side and there you go let's put it next to our drum bus and I'm going to use the same samples that I used in a previous tutorial it's just a basic drum loop let's open up the mixer so there's our drums this is what I'm going to parallel compress I'm not parallel compressing the kick so it's just the snare, closed hat, open hat, and a little percussion loop. So what we need to do is we're going to send our original group to the new group. And what I like to do is move to pre-fader. Now the reason I like to do this is if I drop the level of this, we can still we can still hear that group. The reason being is I actually want to hear what the compressor is doing not including the original drive signal if that makes sense so let's put a compressor okay so there's our compressor and um, we will go nuts put a load of ratio on bring the threshold down a little bit i'm going to put hard knee on i'm going to take off or again and basically just experiment Obviously the attack and release is kind of what's really important here um, to bring out specific transients, um, what you like. So just mess around with these two until you hear something. Let's put a bit more threshold on. See, that's hammering hell out of the snare. That'll do for this case. So now we'd bring that down, we'd turn our drums back up. So there's our original drums. And we just add the parallel to taste. Now hopefully you'll be able to hear what that's done. It's changed the tonal characteristics of the original drum loop. It's added a bit of weight, a bit of depth, even maybe like a little bit of width. It just sounds fatter and just all around nicer. So without... Now what you could also do is EQ. So again, let's just drop the signal level of that one down so we can hear what we're doing and we could EQ our drums just to add some slight different qualities as well so let's just change that to 36 We wouldn't necessarily put this amount of EQ boost in. It's just because it's a parallel compression channel, we can actually go quite ridiculous. Something like that will do. Bring that down again. There's our original. So you can hear there, it's definitely added a lot to the original sounds just to give it a bit more punch, um, a bit more presence in your mix. So parallel compression is really, really handy. And what we'll do now is let's, let's take the compression off. And I'm also gonna take the EQ off for now. 
so I'll just bypass that and let's try something different let's try some distortion uh, again we'll use just the standard distortion in Cubase and let's just go through the presets there you go we've obviously destroyed those drums now let's bring that down turn our original back up and add to taste let's maybe turn our EQ back on without So you can see you can add some real weird uh, additional dynamics and presence to the sound and create something that's um, a lot more powerful and punchy within the mix. Again, don't stop at uh, distortion. Let's try, let's take that off and let's do a modulation of some description. Let's try, let's try a flanger. Try that one. Okay, turn that down, bring our original ones back in. Really, really nice. And don't forget, this just does not have to be on drums. Obviously, a flanger probably sound a lot better on vocals or guitars or pads. Uh, something along those lines but you can hear there it's still it's creating some interest within our original sound without washing it completely with an effect and again it doesn't just have to be one insert we could apply let's put a let's put a compressor after that as well and completely slam it with compression let's do something like that So here's our newly compressed and destroyed sound. And let's also put, let's put a distortion on there. And we'll use the old, the tube. So bring that down, there's our original sound again. So again, it's definitely added interest and it's added thickness and it's added weight and body. Really, really handy tool. Again, doesn't just have to be used on drums. It can be used on vocals, pads, anything you can think of, guitars. So try it out. Try it on a few different things. There's nothing to stop you just experimenting. Again, we've just quickly used some Cubase stock plugins. Obviously, if you've got a particular compressor that you like, uh, something that adds a little bit of tonal characteristic, maybe an old analog compressor, you know, something like that, then by all means use that. You know, use what works for you and definitely experiment. That's what it's all about. Just a quick tutorial. If you found it useful, then please, as always, do subscribe to my channel. And until next time, take care. Bye bye. Check that body. Get, get, get